the African Union. I showed you the history of what happened and what turn that we went and kind of got us stagnated in a, in a, in, in a kind of a way that didn't really help at all, but made us run around in circles. All right. And then, like I said before in the, in our, in our, in our class yesterday, this is not to poke at the, the Garveyites. It's just our intentions on this planet when it comes to liberating and helping our people, they're all good because if you love our people or you love to live your sight, you love your, yourself and you love life, you would always try to help the people, right? That's not a negative. The intention is really good, but not doing it properly or maybe going the wrong way has been some of our faults in history. We've always been brought to the front door of, of things, but not really walk through and truly understand it. You know, I'm so happy that we're in the world today that all generations, whether you're young or in your time, you get to see for the first time in, the, in forever, a lot of things that are going on on this planet <clears throat> that are coming to light. A lot of information, a lot of um, court hearings and things that are happening on, in real time, really coming to light. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So, yeah, we did take a wrong turn, but the age of Aquarius is now showing us and showing everything, showing that things can't hide in the dark no more. The Piscean age is over and has been over. And just like the age, every 2,661, 63, some people say 64 years is the age. We still have a lot of age to go because we just started. We just got into the age of Aquarius. We're not even in the middle of 2,000 years in the age. Imagine, imagine when we get there, how much truth is, and that you could try to say a lie, but it, the truth will always come out in this time and age. Return to the mindset of your ancestors is one of the things that Noble Drew Ali expressed in some of his writings. And more and more every day, I see it. I see the curtains opening and I can see the Wizard of Oz and who is playing and who is not. People can't hide no more. You know, you can't hide. And what is called evil on the planet, it's not going to go away, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be at a, a, um, a different balance. A different type of balance. Where there is negative, there's going to be positive. But this type of balance that I'm talking about is going to work together. That's how this planet's made. And when you really study and exercise the seven hermetic principles, you see what I'm talking about. They're going to work together. Negative and positive is the charge. Just like any battery in any vehicle or any moving part that needs that battery. Positive and negative is in nature. I always told you that when you're looking at even languages, because I remember somebody mentioned Hebrew, you would look at also the, neg the negative and positive or the male or female attributes of the language, which would make it a full script. Properly, following the nature's laws. So if you don't have that in your, in your notes, put it in your notes that in the seven hermetic principles, gender, which is seven, the seven principle, where everything on this planet 
including the script, has male or female, which is negative and positive, in it. Matteo, turn off the lights. It's big, broad daylight. Go back to the ways of the ancient one. How many people here truly um, understand what's going on on this planet? How many people here kind of kind of get it? What's been happening? How many people here are seeking the real erudition? Hmm? Are you afraid to wipe away the reality that you have for a new one while you're alive? Because that's what a lot of this does. I've come to realize that even over the days, it came to me like an epiphany. It just, I was like, wow, you know what? I feel like, I, I feel like I've traded a, a reality for something else. Right. Nationality and being erudited has me thinking about things on totally different angles. My eyes are wide open and I can see the path, I can see the way. And I know many people who have their eyes open should be able to see the way. See the way. How many people here are nationalized? How many people here are nationalized? How many people here want to nationalize? In order for you to run your businesses, on a different platform or a different jurisdiction of your own, of course, an autonomous community. Nationalizing is the only and one way to do it because it keeps you out of the jurisdiction and you get to exercise who you are, who you are made to be, meant to be, and not held back your evolution is not held back. That's what nationality is all about. <clears throat> it's to bring you back to your pedigree for one and bring you back to your the true religion that you've always been, even though you were sleeping at the time or just waking up, it doesn't matter. As long as you breathe breath on this planet, part of you was already knowing and training and getting ready for even this moment. Does that make sense? Nationality. Yesterday, I was showing you the, 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 the purpose of a declaration and the purpose of a, of, a, of a proclamation and how it works. How it works. I even showed you, because we had Willie say something about um, the different, uh, he mentioned um, filling out applications and with, that they didn't have the box for certain ones. And we went in as far as to showing you the race codes. You know, it's important. The race codes alone, if that didn't spook you out yesterday with the race codes, like there's, you could be classified as chocolate or coffee, or um, multi, uh, biracial, and all these kind of things. Words that people use mostly all the time, whether they're writing a novel or it's in the news being declared on TV. Does people see the importance of it? It's not that we're trying to get a club here. 
It's one of your rights that you have. It's one of your rights that you have. You know, there's no fee to it. We're not asking for no money. I've never, ever, 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 ever asked you for money for nationality because I know that it's your God-given right. It was given to me, so I give it to you. But do people see the importance of something that was given to you? My mother said that free is not good, but I told her, but God gave us this planet for free, so isn't that not good? It's your rights. This is something that Martin Luther King was trying to get to when he was trying to deal with the civil rights. When Martin Luther King was doing the marches and trying to get us to overstand civil rights and fight for it, it was the right intention. It was the, it was the right intention. The only problem was the black thing not realizing that we're not black people and not realizing the terms in dictionary form, in law, meaning what black is and what a minority is. These were things that were missing, right? Marcus Garvey knew that it was the American Union, but didn't have enough knowledge to continue it, but Still kept the still kept the intention well by calling it the African Union and still having us reminded, you know, Elijah Muhammad, um, Farrakhan, still telling us and still letting us know who we are with the intention, still teaching even the old Canaanite. They're calling it Nation of Islam. That's fine. It's the intention that's real. The Hebrews, the Christians, all of you. It's the intention that's right. But that's just the, the religion part and just the religious part of us. But what about the commercial part of us? Because this planet is not just only a school, I say, but the commercial part of it. The commercial part, when I say commercial, I'm not talking about selling yourself, neither. Or selling your estate or holding slaves. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the claims that every man, woman, and child at some point in life is going to have to make. No one's exempt from making a claim. Nobody. Especially in the age of truth, where if you say what you say you are, you have to prove it. Matriarchs, nobles, be careful. Because what you claim is what you claim. But when you claim it, remember, you'll be tested, not by me. And that goes with anything. You can claim to be Superman. At some point, people are going to want you to fly. You claim you're Spider-Man, some people are going to want you to climb a tree or climb a wall. This is not the age of saying what you are and people are just going to look at you and go, yeah, and nod their head, yes. This is the age of whatever you claim to be. You're going to have to prove it. Wouldn't you rather claim your ancient selves? Point of interest. Yes, go ahead. In uh, support of uh, what you are expressing here, being uh, uh, a national, and I'm going to make a quote from the, uh, the sovereign status, which says this, Sovereign status is foreign to and not subject to by the status of statute 
staples. So chattel parties or property, citizens, resident, subject person, whoever. Mm -hmm. My interpretation of that is that this takes you out of from the chattel uh, property to the person, relieves you of and promotes you beyond that, um, that category, which does not cause you to be subject to the different statutes that has been laid down generally for citizens or any other. Uh, under statutes, rules, regulations, policies, common usage of the corporate Canada, the corporate province of Ontario, and or any other corporate government body whatsoever without a valid contract is non-incorporated. Incorporated statutory, in capi uh, capacitated statute, immune tax taxes, immune non obligee, exempt from levy, and claim diplomatic immunity and sovereign immunity. And an experience that was developed from this. My wife and I went into Walmart and they refused to give us the tax exemption that uh, we uh, we demanded. It took, it took us 45 minutes with the application of about seven supervisors six or seven supervisors, and they actually, at the end of all this, to and fro, gave us our full 13% relief taxes on the diplomatic status. So this is one of the, uh, the uh, services and the other uh, uh, levels uh, attainment that uh, the, the nationalization provides for those who are nationalized. You can stand on the circuit by just the, the paper, uh, the paperwork here that has been given and registered. And in addition to that, we have notified over 13 different uh, government agencies, including the prime minister, the premier, the, the mayor, the Attorney General's Federal Provincial uh, Ministry of uh, National Revenue and uh, Canada Revenue Services, and uh, Ministry of Transportation, both uh, federal, provincial, and uh, we are at the point now of uh, notifying the local police forces, and uh, Service Canada, and uh, you name it. So this here gives you that extra clout. It all also gives you the confidence and in the, the structure of uh, these uh, 26, 28, 30 pages, there is so many things that uh, can be uh, extended as far as knowledge because it is all entwined with legal and other factual um, provisions and tools that we can use to extend our, our full knowledge and confidence and capacity. I step down. Ashe, thank you for that noble, excellent, excellent demonstration. Excellent, excellent demonstration. Noble. So they were able to take the taxes off eventually when you have to twist their arm. Correct. Under, under the, under the dipl diplomatic status, and they do have that in their records. It's available. So if anyone has any uh, challenges with uh, with um, Walmart, there is the answer for your relief under diplomatic uh, status. Excellent, excellent, excellent. 
That's the same thing at um, Best Buy's diplomatic status. They have a button for it. They have okay. a button. Yeah, at uh, the Best Buy's. So all we need to do is to claim it. Yep. 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 When they did the one at Best Buy, they the the manager, the floor manager said that they've never, they don't even, they never trained their, they have never really trained their cashiers to um, press that button. It was like a that secret button that no one really pressed. They were trained to, to use the cashier, but they were they never knew about that one button. Well, that's that's, not, that's not in all stores though. So don't get don't, people, please don't get it twisted that way. It's you, you have to do your research and find out what's going on and how that store um, operates. Well, the supervisors were not even acquainted with it, so uh, you know there was a lot of rambling going on and. Uh, the uh, general manager, they summoned him to the desk, but he refused to, to come down. So, you know, it was, a, it was a haggling going to and fro. But we did receive it at the end. Shay, very good demonstration. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <coughs> Thank you. I stand down. Thank you for that, Noble. Most welcome. Nas nationality is 100% to deal with jurisdiction. That jurisdiction should always be challenged at all times. What you think people own, people don't own it. Could not, people, people, people cannot own everything or have everything. Let's put it this way. And jurisdiction is always being challenged. When you're nationalizing, that's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're correcting the jurisdiction. This whole time, from generation after generation, every time we had some leader bring us somewhere, the tension was good. But the problem was, honestly, if you study law, if you study law, you'll realize that it's jurisdiction. Jurisdiction was the number is the number one problem. For an example, every man and woman in this class that has a driver's license, right? And you're melanated, you didn't have to, you didn't have to register anything like that. You didn't have to register anything like that. Right. You didn't have to do that. You had to only put that in your community and have that as a community thing. That you are able to function and operate a motor vehicle. We we're all trained to thinking that we needed to go get a license from whatever state or district you're from. Right. Think about this. Imagine. Everybody knew that you didn't have to do that and that all you had to do is declare it in your community, your autonomous community. Right. And maybe eventually, maybe the community that you're in would make their own. That's what civics is. Civics is you dealing with your own pedigree. Just like it says in in law. When it comes to a trial or a trial hearing, that the hearing can only and should be only heard by your own peers. Why do you think they say that? Why do you think that's in law? It's one of your rights to have everything heard in front of your own peers, not somebody who is not the same pedigree as you. Your own peers people who are like you, people who are in the community or in the same vibration or the same heritage or culture of you. Where do you think that comes from? We've been trained to go to court and be tried under cases where it's not our peers.
I've seen cases where nationals are being tried and none of those people in the jury is the, our peers. These are violations and known as crimes against humanity. The court systems were all de facto. And because they show court on TV as an entertainment thing, or they show policing on TV to have you think that that's how it's supposed to go. That's called social engineering to make you think that's how it goes. That's not how it goes. <clears throat> that's not how it goes. For an example, how many people here know that when it comes to a jury, right? And the selection of the jury, did you know that the correct way? Well, let's start with the wrong way. You've heard of people getting a letter from the courts to come and, you know, witness a and be part of a jury and have jury duty. Right. And they pick this average, just pick anybody, you know, mostly people with a good record or whatever they have you or a good standing in, in, in their, in the public. Right. So they pick anybody and it's usually not all of your peers. All right. The, that's, that's the fact though, but that's not how you pick jury. And if you pick jury like that, the qualifications to be part of the jury would be that you know law. That you know law and exercise law. A jury would be full of people, it'd be a, a, a people that are in there that actually know law. But do you see that today? They pick anybody. So these are all de facto and violations. And these are things that erudition is going to help you fix and put back in place. Back in place. The consular court. Put it back in place. Where if our people are in court for whatever reason, their rights to have their, their, their crime or whatever they have you be tried in our autonomous courts, not theirs no more. And them following and not violating international law. That's what nationality makes you. It makes you foreign to jurisdictions that are claiming you. Empress Bev, I see your hand up. The floor is yours, Empress Bev. Yes, uh, greetings, uh, Cameron, and greetings, um, all my brothers and sisters. Hope you're all well. Um, I'm still in Jamaica, um, and I, I had a little issue here. Um, but the first thing I wanted to um, um, ask is the matter that you were talking about just now, um, saying that you have the right to be tried by peers. Um, how does that work if it's just a county court? And you simply just have a one judge, either a circuit judge or a, or a district judge. How, how would that work? Because am I, am I supposed to um, request or state that I only want to be tried or heard before a melanated judge? Right. Well, not a melanated judge, but a judge of your peers, of who you're culture is and who your nationality your pedigree is yes so so uh, well okay so i use the word melanated to which is substituted um with the word black let me give you so, a, talking, so am, me, I, am i am i asking for a black judge no no let me give you let me give you an example right the um do you remember when um canada and us arrested 
uh, the CEO of the telecommunications, Chinese telecommunications company called Huawei. The Huawei. The Huawei. Yes. Bigger than... Yes, I, yes, I remember that. Right. So on the eastern half of the planet, Huawei is like the biggest network. When we, when we yeah. look at um, Google and all that stuff, that's nothing. Mm-hmm. Huawei is bigger than Google, bigger than Mac, bigger than all of them. Right. So the Canada and U.S. arrested her for whatever. They made up some bull crap about what they are arresting her for. And they locked her up. And who came for her? Not her husband. No, no, no. her peers. Yeah. It's her her peers. Who's her peers? The Chinese government. Um, Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So the Chinese government stepped in, said, hey, man, she didn't do no crime because crime is if you hurt somebody or damage property. And where did she hurt somebody? So international law looks at it as crime only being if I hurt somebody or damage property. And she did neither one of the two. Right. So they were saying, you're not going to let her go. All right. Because in order for them um, not just to let her go, they're talking and saying that they're requesting her case to be tried in China and not in the U.S., because right. Those are years. right, but that's a that's a criminal. That's in in the event of a criminal charge. What if it's not a criminal charge, but it's a, a civil matter? You still have a you still have um, a judge, or you still have to go before a judge in the event of a civil matter. Like, for example, if you're challenging, I don't know, property, for example. Yes. Uh, so it's not it, it's not a it's not a police crime, but and it's not a crime at all, in fact, it, but it still needs to go before a judge of some sort. And so my question really was to do with that. You know, if you're being brought to court and you attend and you get a judgment against you, are you requesting a black judge if you're black? Well, if you're black, then you're going to get a black judge. We're not requesting black judges. Who are we requesting? We're requesting American citizen judges. Okay. So basically, other judges that have been uh, that have been nationalized. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. But in in this in the British system, I'm not so sure that you can request that. Why is that? Um, because the well, the, the majority of um, the people judges mm-hmm. in that jurisdiction are not they're not nationals. Exactly. So the case would be transferred over into a nationals court automatically. So it'd be tried in China, not in the U.S. or Canada. Okay, and if you're if you're halfway through the case, can you can you just stop it and get them and tell them what you want? Not that you stop it and tell them what you want. It's a violation of what they did because the very first thing when dealing with a case, no matter what it is, is diversity of nationality. The very first thing that's on the table for and before any case starts is diversity of nationality. But when you walk into a court. They, you got to put on record what is your nationality first before we even talk about the issue. Okay. So is so is it is it still okay to to do it? Well, yes, because that's one of your rights. One of your rights is to nationalize. It's, it's, it, uh, you can nationalize anytime. There, I've I've seen nationals nationalized right in jail. No, I'm a, I'm already a national. I'm mm. more. I'm talking about the case being in progress. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I can stop it and well, and have and have it restarted and and judged by a national. Well, you gotta you gotta enter writs to for that to start going the other way, because now questions are 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 to be answered, and you're staying in honor. And you're doing, you're you're putting back the processes that have been been violated for the last hundred years. 
That's what it is. So, yes, if you have to go back, because that's like if you were to do an appeal, then that would be something you'd want to bring in, in an appeal. Let's say the case went all the way till it got a judgment and you wanted to appeal the case. Nationality be one of the things you would want to put into the case to mm -hmm. In, a, in an appeal because it's a violation of due process. Okay. Fine. Thank you very much for that. Appreciate that. I do have another question, but I'll, I'll, I'll let the others um, ask their question and I'll come back a bit later. I sure. All right. Thank you. Devin Heaven, I see your hand up. The floor is yours. Point of interest. It was my understanding that there is two different types of jury trial, trial by jury yes. and a jury trial, mm -hmm. one in which the judge participates and which is one of which the jury itself has all control and the results by jury only, not by an advisement from the judge right and in some in most cases or in a lot of cases you're allowed to pick the jury aren't you correct so when you pick your own peers no matter if the case is being heard in their court or our court it still has to be done in front of your own peers correct that right to pick them right yes i just wanted a clarification on that uh mm. that information that i uh, had procured some time ago, and that is still the case. If you, if you, you put your own uh, twelve uh, juries together, you, you're, you're, they are controlled by your jury and not by their trial by jury uh, cases, which is controlled by the judge. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for Thank that. You. Thank right. you for that clarification. Thank you. You have to remember. I yield. I yield. Thank you for the no, no vote. Most excellent, welcome. Excellent, excellent information. I hope everybody's taking notes because that's excellent. All right. Take to mind also and remember that. There is processes in in law that have been violated. This is why it's called a de facto court system, because we already know that there's pieces and parts that are not there that have to do with the actual pedigree of the people, whether you're in their court or you're in our autonomous court. It works vice versa. And it says it and it mentions it inside of the treaty, how it works. I want to turn your attention to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. This is the Treaty of Peace and Friendship that's on your screen. With our government and the United States. Yesterday, I was showing you that the United States has put themselves all over the planet. And I, I even tested you on identifying where the United States is also. And it became very global. But when you read this, con this, this contract or this, this trust indenture, which is a treaty that we have with the United States, it talks about even having their citizens. Article six, if any more shall bring citizens of the United States or their effects to his majesty, the citizens shall be immediately be set at liberty and his effects restored. What does that mean? That means if we were to arrest them and it wasn't for uh, um, their, um, whatever, they're not the same peers, we have to let them go and have that case 
sent to their courts and not in our courts. And all of his effects restored. And in like manner, if any more, not a subject of the dominions shall make prize of any of the citizens of America or their effects and bring them to any of the ports of his majesty, they shall be immediately released as they will be considered under his majesty's protection. So it's vice versa. That's what the treaties were all about. And this is why the treaties are the supreme laws of the land, along with the constitutions that people seldom don't really talk about. When you talk about what is the supreme law of the land, people go, oh, just the constitution. When it's not only the constitutions, it's the constitutions and treaties that we have that separates us and gives us the foreign jurisdiction, no matter where we are. We're not talking about distance. We're talking about where you are is a foreign jurisdiction. That house you're in, when you create it and put a lodial title on it, you've created a foreign jurisdiction. It's easy like that. When you read the, the treaties, one of the things is why I'm talking about nationality is that when you put your businesses together, when you put your businesses together, we will be using the treaties to do that. There's going to be a lesson or a, a, a class session in the future where I'm going to have you point out things in the treaty that have to do with the business that you have. So the business would fall underneath the treaty rights that you already have that's written here and in many other treaties that we have. All right. Treaty law. Always remember treaties are the supreme law of the land. And why I'm talking about nationality is because in order for you to have a proper autonomous community, we would be running our businesses from the treaties. And the, the fact that the treaties are, are written for our protection and there to help us to do commerce. For an example, In this, in this treaty, if I remember right, it talks about um, importing and exporting. If you have a business that involves products that you need to import and export through the treaty, You'll be able to do that. <sighs> Article seven that talks about it when you import and export. It says right here: if any vessel of either party shall be put into port of the other and have and um, provisions. <laughs> 